All right, we're going to learn some escapes from the body scissor hole here. Or, you know, he's also got him in a horrible neck crank right here. This is a continuing Farmer Burns' book on uh, catch wrestling. And look at the hole this guy on the bottom has here. He had his legs wrapped around him very deep there, and he's got him, he's crushing his face. Now, if he was doing jiu-jitsu right here, he'd be choking him to death. So it looks like this guy has definitely got the advantage on the bottom right here, and it does look like he's in a strong position. However, Burns is actually doing an escape. So let's read about his escape, and we're going to have to come back to this. Okay, I don't think he's going to tell you that escape. Block and guard against the Chancery. All right, so here's how we're going to get out of that. Well, I'll just go through it with you easily. What Burns has done, because this guy is doing it as a wrestling move, which means he has his hands across this guy's face and he's not choking him, it gives him the opportunity to bend up on his knee, press down, and do an ankle break. So Burns is escaping from this using an ankle break. He is going to reach up, bend the knee more towards the guy's head, which t weakens the leg a lot. Then he's going to grab a hold of the back of the ankle and the front of the toes and twist and break the ankle. And if you want to see how this feels, just simply lay on your back and put your toe up there, put your leg up, and let someone grab it and twist your ankle because this is not a normal position. If you'll lay on your back, your foot is pointed out. When someone takes it and twists it in, it hurts a lot right away. It'll start hurting your ankle a lot, and it'll hurt you so much that you'll even stop a chokehold. It takes a heck of a tough person to not uh, to not give up when someone's breaking their ankle, and that's and you know and, and so that's a great little escape right here. The head scissors. This is a obviously a great jujitsu move. You're choking the guy unconscious with a head scissor. At the same time, he also has him. He's got two hands on his wrist, so he can't escape or roll out. So you flipped over the top of the guy. You have both your legs wrapped around his head. You made a figure four across your ankle. You're going to choke him unconscious pretty easily here, aren't you? His only escape is to try and twist and turn into you, right, or twist and turn away from you. But what Burns has done, he has actually got a double wrist bar, and now he's made it an arm bar, too. So this is such a good-looking move. And I hope he explains it more down further, but he's wrapped both legs around the guy's head. He's bent the wrist, and he's locked the arm. So he's going to be breaking the, breaking the arm at the same time he's choking him unconscious. So this would be a wonderful move to use in a jiu-jitsu match because you're going to push that arm. If you'll notice, your arm is straight back. When his, his arm is straight back, folks, and it's locked. And there's nothing that prevents Burns from pushing further on that arm and breaking the shoulder. At the same time, while he's pushing further on the arm and breaking the shoulder, he can obviously choke him unconscious with the head scissors. Now, he's doing this for a wrestling pin here, but this is a wonderful street jiu-jitsu move and a, a, a jiu-jitsu tournament move. If you wrap around that head and you squeeze, he'll, he'll start tapping out from that. If not, you can take that double wrist lock, continue to push down on his arm, and you're going to break his shoulder, folks. There's no if, answer, buts about it. He's not going to escape that lock. That's a great move. Block and guard against the Chancery. So he's blocking and guarding against the Chancery here. And uh, how's he doing it here? It looks like he has folded his arm up across his head to try and block it. I don't know. We're going to have to come back to that. We know this block for the Chancery. If someone's got you in the headlock, if you will simply bend over and wrap both of your legs, hands around his leg, you can actually pick him straight up in the air and smash him onto his back. So if someone's got you in a headlock, <coughs> you can pick him straight up in the air from here and smash him onto his back. In the street, for all you street fighters out there, if someone's got you in a headlock in the street like this, punch him in the groin, folks. Punch him in the groin. That'll loosen his grip pretty effectively. Punch him in the groin. At the same time, you could take your leg and hit him in the knee with that and collapse his knee and break his knee. So this is a this is three great escapes and a great position for three great escapes from a headlock. Where you're wrapping around his leg, you could you can oh no he's not showing you. you punch him in the groin, you could break his knee. And let's see here, are we going to get into any explanations? No, these are showing some technique here, so we have to study these ourselves. 
All right, he's got him in a chancery hole. <clears throat> and the guy below has got him wrapped around his leg. And this plate shows a cross lock or far leg hole on Barnes. The hole can be secured from the position. Barnes throws his shoulder outward to force his head and shoulders into the opponent's arm and grasp cross lock like Bill has. This can effectively rush the opponent to the side. So I don't know who has the advantage here. I would think if you're wrestling, Barnes is going to have the advantage because now he can just simply lift up on that leg and put his shoulders on the bat, mat and he's going to easily get the pin. The guy on the bottom has a, has a nice little advantage here, but if, I think Burns has got his other leg spread out there, so he's good, he could be in his knee. In the street, if you have someone in this position, if they had tried to get you in a headlock, you can just knee them right in the groin. If you knee them right in the groin, they're going to let go of the headlock, obviously. At the same time, if you're in a wrestling match and you have this position, you can easily push or force his shoulder to the ground, and you can lift up on his leg and you'll get the pin. So even though in a, in a street fight or an MMA match, this looks like the guy on the bottom has an advantage. He doesn't have an advantage at all because I can continue. I can knee him a couple times in the groin with my right or my left knee. I can put my leg on his stomach and do an escape. You know, I can put a, you know, I, and a, then I can get my head out easily and I have his, already got his leg locked in there for coming up for a leg bar. Fall across lock hole. This illustrates... He comes to the mat, burns, uh, Bell throws Burns backwards, falls on the mat with his leg hold, at the same time stepping between his burned leg and puts him in a position of tremendous advantage. Burns secures a chancery, but a little bass because Burns has a nearly powerless position. By raising his leg and bearing down his shoulder into Burns' chest, Burns cannot turn in either direction. All right, there's a guy, he's, he, 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 Burns has got him in a... In a a grapevine here. The grapevine and leg lock. You can frequently rush your opponent to the mat and leg dive so he'll be sitting resting on one elbow. In case of this kind, instantly fasten your leg lock for a grapevine. The grapevine is taken to prevent a side roll and the division your work prevent, provides you both ways and prevents your opponent from turning to the right or left. At any moment you, weak, you, can, you, you, can, you can take him to a pin there. So he's shot in on a leg lock and now what makes it unique, he's not only shot in on a leg lock, he stepped over and he's done a grapevine. So he shot in on a leg lock, knocked the guy to the ground, and now he stepped over the top of the knee and done a leg lock. Now he's got pretty strong control right there, doesn't he? Because he's shot in and he's done a leg lock. And the guy is going to, he could easily continue to lift up on that leg. Now what, the, the man here on the top, Burns, has the leg lock. See how he's got it hooked around the guy's leg? Now, if he just lifts up very high and presses down with his hip, it looks like he could dislocate the guy's knee pretty easily, couldn't he? So if you're in this position and you lift up and press down, you should be able to dislocate the guy's knee pretty easily there, don't you think? Looks like it'd be a pretty easy leg lock, knee break from right there. So looks like a nice jiu-jitsu move right there, folks. Oh, but look what he did. He surprised us. <laughs> huh. Resulting here, Burns attempted to turn his opponent to protect himself. He withdraws his left arm. At the instant he raises his left arm, Burns breaks the leg hole, instantly throws his arms to the back, and locks the back of his opponent's head. The only chance he ha the opponent has no chance to get away. So he's gone from here, right? He's gone from here, and he immediately going to jump up and wrap around the guy's head while he has a grapevine. Now that looks like a nasty hole there, folks. So he's got him in a great grapevine. He's got his leg really stretching out and breaking his knee, because this hurts his knee a lot. At the same time, he's underhooked his arm. He's wrapped around the front of his neck, and, and, and man, that looks like a painful hole, doesn't it? I've never seen anything like that in my life. He could obviously drop his head down further and put it underneath the guy's chin and break the guy's, break the guy's neck. So look what he's done here. He's thrown him to the ground in a, in a, with a leg dive. He's did, and now he's flipped it in and got him on a leg lock. And from there he's jumped up quickly, wrapped around the guy's arm underneath and over his head and squeezes his neck together. This is a very interesting hole, isn't it? This looks like it's a great technique you could use in a jiu-jitsu match. When you have someone in this position here, folks, 
if you were to continue to go back to the bat and you and you had his head locked, couldn't you break his shoulder and, and, and really give a hell of a neck wrench there? And of course, his knee, that position his knee is in is not very comfortable. Just imagine your leg being sideways and your knee being forced out the other way. Your knee does not bend that way very comfortably, folks, especially when someone else has their other leg locked inside of it and it's trying to crack your knee. So this is a very interesting hole there. And what are you supposed to do? If you want to learn this, you study the pictures. Then you have your opponent let you assume your partner, let you assume the position. See if you can get into this position. If you can get in this position, then you want to study what you've done, study the effectiveness of it, then write it down and come back and try it. So this is a grapevine and a chancery hole, or a grapevine and a leg lock. Nasty stuff. Here we go. Here's a guy wrapping in a headlock. And it looks like he's trying to do a grapevine too. Leg hole in the grapevine. Here Farmer Burns on the left and Jack on the right. This is a leg hole that Farmer Burns could have secured in any similar position. As he grasps the leg, Tomasia throws a grapevine across his further leg to prevent going to the mat. At the same time, throws a chancer around the neck. Burns, however, is strong, and while his opponent is off balance, maybe it'll throw him backwards, and he can step away from the grapevine, and then he'll have his opponent in a bad position. So look how he's countering that. So the guy, he's dove in, the guy's got him in the headlock, and he's got the headlock with a grapevine. So he thinks he's got him in good shape here. He's got him in, the, the guy on the right, Tamira, or whatever his name is, has him in a headlock, and he's also thrown in a grapevine. But Burns has got a lot more strength in this position, because the guy right here is up on that one leg. And because he's got that leg, Burns is going to jump and lift him. When he jumps and yanks him up, he's going to have the guy in a very bad position right there. And then because the guy's legs or arms are wrapped around his leg, his head, he's going to be falling onto the ground in a very tough position right here. Very tough position. After breaking the grapevine, Burns picks his opponent up and prepares to lay him on the mat. Uh, now, if you're in the street, you don't lay him on the mat. You smash him on the mat. The opponent naturally retains his hold in the neck in order to save himself. Burns now raises the leg high to his shoulder and sits down and throws his legs forward, binding the left arm and easily forcing the shoulders. This is a clever piece of work but requires much practice. So if he's got you in a headlock and he's got you in a grapevine, you're going to yank him up, pick him up parallel, and then from there he's going to sit down or in the street, you would just continue to drive over forward and smash his head right into the ground, breaking his neck. If you drove over forward and smashed his head into the ground, you're definitely going to do a lot of damage to the guy's neck. And you could jump down there and break his shoulder, too. And you notice, for some reason, the guy still has, has his arm behind Burns' leg. If he falls down, he can, he can trap his arm, too, can't he? So that's a pretty nasty-looking position for the guy on the bottom to be in, isn't it? Pretty tough one to get out of, but this requires much practice to learn. So now we're looking at a, he's going to do a shot, and he's got him in a, Opponent head and arm chancery. Burns has a reverse chancery on Fred Bell. He's going to now get behind Farmer Burns. Note carefully that Burns is in a strong position of all his legs and ankles. So he's shot in, and he, we have now blocked him. He's now been blocked on the shot. He's blocked the guy's got an overhook, or he's got it wrapped around the guy's head. Now he, he can't get a. Uh, I, uh, he could, if he's in the street, he could wrap up a uh, guillotine from there. But Burns is going to continue to push around him. See how he's pushing around and driving him towards the ground. When you can pu continue to push around and drive him to the ground, you're going to put him right on your back. So when someone's got you in this position here, and they're getting ready to try to put a guillotine on you, if you will get up on your hands and toes and drive into him, drive in, drive in, and you also gonna, he's also reaching up and grabbing inside of his leg, you can force him onto his back, and you can escape that guillotine pretty easily. Because you're forcing him onto his back, and you're going to step over the top of him, and he won't be able to put the guillotine on you. He's got to have a, to do the guillotine, he's got to have some type of a lever and a bar, and he can't do the lever and a bar if you're driving through him, and you're going to force him to his back and pull. And you see how he's got his hand underneath his leg and is driving around and through him? This puts him on his back and makes it a much more powerful move for the guy on the bottom, who's
who's driving through him, pushing him all the way onto his back. So when someone gets you in that position, folks, so many people are stopping. Oh, what do I do? What do I do? And then don't do that. Don't let that guy on the, that's trying to do the guillotine get control. You push through him and drive him to his back, and you'll take control of the situation.